Hello, cadets. This is Dr. Gordon Cook. As part of MS 200 Lesson 35, we're going to talk about the casualty collection point. Uh, here is our outcome for this portion of the lesson. Let's start with planning for casualties. All right. You need to plan for casualties and how you're going to care for them. This includes chemical casualties and should have an emphasis on life-saving tasks. You need to set priorities for manning essential weapons and any gear that's needed for your mission. If a machine gunner becomes wounded, someone else needs to man the machine gun so the platoon is only down a rifle and not a machine gun. This goes for other important gear that you might need to uh, finish your mission. You need to specify your preferred and alternate methods and routes for evacuation. How are you going to get your casualties out and back to medical care? And medical and casualty evacuation should be rehearsed like any other critical parts of the mission. The tactical situation dictates how quickly fellow soldiers can provide care for the wounded. Fewer casualties occur if soldiers focus on destroying or neutralizing the enemy that is causing casualties. During the fight, casualties should remain undercover. The casualty collection point is normally set up in a covered and concealed position to the rear of the platoon's position. Your squad leaders need to arrange the casualty evacuation to the platoon CCP as soon as the situation allows. Leaders should remove all essential operational items and equipment before evacuating casualties to the casualty collection point. This includes GPS, maps, position location devices, any comsec that might be on a soldier. Units should have an SOP for handling weapons and ammunition of its wounded. The platoon medic conducts triage on all casualties and takes steps to stabilize their condition at the casualty collection point. The senior military person present determines whether to request medical or casualty evacuation and assigns precedence. These decisions are based on the advice of the senior medical person at the scene, the patient's condition, and the tactical situation. Now there's four priority levels to talk about. Priority one is urgent. These are things where there's potential loss of life, limb, or eyesight in if the person doesn't get to adequate care in less than an hour there could be permanent disability. Now, there's also a subcategory 1A for urgent surgical. This is where you would require surgery to save a life or they need surgery to stabilize them until you can get further evacuation. Priority level two is called priority. And these are things that will turn into urgent if they're not evacuated in less than four hours. So they need some kind of treatment that's not available locally in order to stabilize them. Third is routine. These are conditions that are not expected to deteriorate worse than they already are. Uh, routine patients should be evacuated in under 24 hours. And priority four is convenience. These are things where evacuation by a medical vehicle is unnecessary, uh, but if it was possible, then, then you'd like to do it at the convenience of the medical unit. I'd also like to discuss the term expectant. Now, this is a triage category, not a priority level for evacuation. The triage process identifies patients who require resources urgently as well as those who have the best chance of survival. The goal is to maximize the total number of people who survive. Expectant casualties are those who have a very low chance of surviving and would require very high resources to do so, exceeding the resources that are practically available. Expectant casualties are expected to die regardless of what medical care they receive. They should be separated from other casualties and provided palliative care, that is, care to keep them comfortable. In summary, have a plan for casualties, including rehearsals. Focus on destroying the enemy during the fight. And keep casualties undercover. Move casualties to the casualty collection point as soon as the situation allows. Make sure to secure key equipment before evacuation. And then prioritize your casualties for evacuation based on advice of your medic and the situation at hand.